So you've restored your wallet from your seed backup, but instead of seeing your funds, all you can see is a bunch of empty accounts. Maybe your wallet is generating the wrong addresses or you can't find the right addresses when you try and import from your hardware wallet. Or maybe you're getting an error in MetaMask or Ledger Live, basically saying something like an unknown address or that the seed and passphrase on the device you're using doesn't match the account. What can you do? I see this question come up a lot in the comments section as well as in people who contact me looking for help doing a recovery. So in this video, I'm just gonna run through a few common reasons why this can happen. Gonna run through some steps to avoid it happening in the first place, uh, as well as what you can do to try and recover. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. The first conclusion everyone always jumps to is there must be some bug in the wallet software that's causing this, but I have seen that is almost never the case. It almost always comes down to human error in one of the following ways. First is things relating to a passphrase or a hidden wallet. Uh, second is something to do with your seed. And the third can be issues with the wallet you are using and specifically compatibility between wallets and derivation paths. So let's start with looking at passphrases. The most important thing to understand if you're using a passphrase or a hidden wallet is that your passphrase is as important as your seed backups and that every different passphrase you use, including if you have a typo in your passphrase, will lead to a totally different set of accounts. So one of the common symptoms you will see if you have a typo in your passphrase or you're using the wrong passphrase is a bunch of empty accounts. If all the language around passphrases, seeds, and passwords is confusing, I explain that in more detail in this video here. This mistake is really easy to make, especially if you're using your hardware wallet in such a way that you have to re-enter the passphrase every time you use it. Uh, very common with Trezors. And especially if you are adding that account into something like MetaMask, you might not even realize that you made a mistake when originally adding the passphrase into your wallet. It might be weeks before you realize there was a problem. To avoid issues with your passphrase, you really need to make sure that you include your passphrase in your backups. Do not just memorize it. And you also need to understand that using a BIP39 passphrase or hidden wallets is an advanced feature. You know, there is a reason why wallets like Ledgers will warn you about this when you turn it on. And I have lost count of the number of folks who have made mistakes uh, using their passphrases that have resulted in loss of funds particularly if people don't really understand what it means when they're prompted for it in the first place. If you're in a situation where you've made a mistake with your passphrase, your only option really is to try a bunch of different passphrases either by hand or by using a tool like BTC Recover. And I've got some examples of that in this video here. Now, the second thing that can cause this is problems with your seed. And the simplest thing to say at the beginning is you might actually be using the wrong seed backup. Again, I've lost count of the number of times where it simply turns out that someone was using the wrong backup and restoring the wrong seed into their wallet. And that's why they couldn't find their funds. If you're new to the space, it can be easy to be in a situation where you have the wrong seed backup as uh, one common misunderstanding I've seen time and time again is that when people get a hardware wallet, they will assume that every time they reset and reinitialize that wallet, it will give them the same seed. It is nothing like that. You get a different seed every time you reset it. The other common thing I see is if you are using a BIP39 wallet that has a 12 word seed, the checksum for 12 word seeds is actually extremely weak. That on its own is a big reason to use a 24 word seed if your wallet supports it. What that means is that with a 12 word seed, you can do something like swap two of the words around and there's actually a one in 16 chance that it will still have a valid checksum. And because your wallet happily accepted this incorrect seed, it will happily generate a whole list of accounts, but none of them will have the addresses that you expect and none of them will show any balance. So if you are using a wallet, whether it's hardware or software that gives you a 12 word seed, and especially if that wallet doesn't do a very good verification of the seed when you first set it up, it's possible that you could have made a mistake like this and just through pure chance have a seed that still checksums correctly. 
And look, while this is possible for a 24 word seed, the chance of you doing something like having swapped some words or something like that and still have a valid checksum for 24 word seeds is only one in 256. So it is much less likely to happen with a 24 word seed. To avoid issues with your seed, the most important thing that you need to do is manage your backups well label them. If you have paper backups, you know, take the time to add some additional commentary that lets you know, you know, which wallet you are using that with, the date that you are using it. And even if you move on to a new seed, it's really worth keeping some backups of your old seeds in some way, just in case you accidentally send funds to the old wallet. If you're a hardware wallet user, it is really worth taking the time to do a full recovery check. And uh, I've covered how to do that with various hardware wallets in these videos here, but that is the way that you can guarantee that the backup you have is correct and will work when you need it. And take the time to verify any additional copies of your seed that you might make. If you're a software wallet user, my suggestion would be that you take the time to practice restoring your wallet seed. If there are already funds in your wallet, don't just go uninstalling your wallet and trying to import the seed and hoping it will work. But instead, you know, get a secondary device, maybe your phone or something like that, and just practice restoring the seed into say MetaMask or Trust Wallet or whatever, just on your mobile phone. But either way, you wanna make sure you double check that that seed is going to work for when you need it. And look, even if you're worried about like cosmic radiation causing a bit flip, just taking the time to practice doing the wallet recovery uh, on a second occasion can essentially rule out the possibility of that kind of error. If you think you're in a situation where there might be a typo in your seed, uh, you could try and firstly do it by hand and have a look at Trezor's wiki. They have a fantastic list of you know commonly mistaken BIP39 words, words that look similar to each other or you can try the software approach and to use a tool like BTC Recover. And if you only got one or two words wrong, you can just use all the defaults exactly as I do in this video here. Finally, we'll look at issues in your wallet software. And often this is due to wallets not following standards in the same way. You know, while things like Ethereum wallets are pretty compatible across the board, there are crappy wallets like Atomic that just do not follow the standards at all for a number of currencies. And what makes this worse, again, for wallets like Atomic, is even the documentation they provide is straight up incorrect. So if, for example, you created your seed in Atomic and then try and restore that seed in another wallet like Metamask, none of your Ethereum will be there. Some software wallets allow you to customize the derivation paths they use so that you can sort of overcome these kind of compatibility issues. And I cover that in this video here, but there are some wallets that simply don't follow standards and don't document how they do things. For things like Bitcoin, this is generally less of an issue now, but there are still wallets out there, particularly some older ones. There's a fantastic community compiled list over at walletsrecovery.org that looks at how a range of different Bitcoin wallets handle this in terms of derivation paths. And depending on the cryptocurrency you're using, there's a number of different tools that can help with this. For example, Electrum now has a fantastic uh, account discovery feature built into it. Uh, and that Electrum now is bundled with Tails. So you can very easily just load that up in a secure environment. And for Ethereum, you can use the tools at findeth.io to search a number of common derivation paths just to see uh, where your funds might have got to. There's a few ways you can go about avoiding this issue. The first and most important is to only use wallets that follow standards well. That is a huge thing and can save you a lot of headache. Secondly, it's important just to take note of the wallet that you are using to include that sort of information in your backup somewhere. And if you find yourself in a situation where the funds are missing, you could either try and use that original software that you used to create the seed or perhaps find documentation about how you go about uh, using uh, wallets that might be current and available to access those funds. One of the biggest challenges with cryptocurrencies is if you're someone who's wanting to self custody your coins, so hold them on your own wallet rather than on an exchange, the most important decisions you make in terms of how you secure those funds, how you keep your backups intact and all of these things happen right at the start. When you back up your seed, when you maybe choose to use a passphrase or not and choose to back that up, when you choose wallet software, all of these choices are actually incredibly important. 
and there's a few small things you can do along the way that significantly decrease the chance of you making a mistake like this that will result in loss of funds. Though one of the good things is if you find an issue with your backups, with your security or whatever, you can just move everything to a new wallet. So there you go. If you're in this situation and are stumped or looking for suggestions, definitely just leave a comment. I do my best to reply to all of them. And if you're absolutely totally stuck and want one-on-one -on -one help, there's information on some options for that on my website. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.